comparing this is what the next show is completely about okay we are defined by our comparisons he is in his 50s he's been in the public eye much more than even i have been there are so many perceptions so many comparisons so many this thing family is part of it mm. but once it becomes a forefront of your identity then it starts going to your head now with me everyone was like where's this kid who is he missing home i was very homesick when i joined doom so then i would see like uh, pictures of my family in the newspaper so that's the only them. access you had to pictures of them so on the two weeks back on the second mm. i woke up and i was like i need to cancel this show mm. i was an artist shit installations are shit mm. i'm not going to be able to put it out nothing's going to sell it's going to give me a bad name to another episode of those cast mera naam hai vinamr kasana make sure you subscribe to this channel because we are the best in bharat आज के हमारे गेस्ट का नाम है रेहान वाड्रा गुड फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड बिन ऑन द शो ऑलमोस्ट टू इयर्स अगो टुडे ही केम बैक टू टॉक अबाउट हिज न्यू शो उपमाना टॉक अबाउट सेल्फ एस्टीम एज एन आर्टिस्ट टॉक अबाउट इफ द ऑडियंस कम्स फर्स्ट और लास्ट टॉक अबाउट हाउ ही हैज डेल्ट विद बींग मेंबर ऑफ द गांधी फैमिली ऑल इज लाइफ हाउ ही किस तरह से मतलब इंसान अपनी सेल्फ एस्टीम कहाँ से लेके आता है किस प्रकार से वो अपने आर्ट को क्रिएट करता है लंडन का खाना बढ़िया है दिल्ली का खाना बढ़िया है मजेदार fun feeling free wheeling conversation that has become standard for those casts the episode with rehan wadra back in 3 2 1 good, good job getting astral pipes astral to is one we got yeah. two more we got malika zeri which is a uh, interior design firm okay and then we've got alpha perfume okay they did a collab with human abi acha you know the way i i've heard of the human from prx mostly ha huh. so huh. they 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 not being human no. not salman khan huh. so huh. sahi hai i think that's the way to go do this see only way hmm yaar yeah, like if you if you do self fund anything like if, even if you st- take initial capital from someone yeah. like fa- family and friends to start with once you go completely bootstrap no aap creative risk le nahi sakte yeah. because aap you are thinking constantly from the lens of um I'm less of a creative, more of an entrepreneur. This software costs me 20k per month, and it's giving me an ROI of 17k per month. Even though in brand value or lifetime brand value, it's given me outputs. Yeah. From a an accounting standpoint, this has to go. You have you to look at that number sheet. No? <laughs> <laughs> that puts any that puts any any lofty thoughts to bed. बिल्कुल खत्म ना because like even now I'm thinking like you know let's just uh, completely burn cash and go all in on production and hiring. Okay. now from business owner standpoint that is a very risky startup optimism hum do din mein startup bana denge aur profit kama lenge wala decision hai but as a creative it makes perfect sense because yeah. you have to eventually burn all bridges so it's that it's like the the economics of your art don't always align with what you want so you have to cut corners wherever yeah. you can at least that's what i've noticed or no, you have to find a way basically yeah yeah and i mean i'm sure it's difficult because hum log to sab kuch digital karte hain none of what we do is physical um But I'm sure when you do physical events and physical art, the costs substantially go up because अगर मेरे को कोई plaster लगाना है दीवार पे तो पहले मैं कारीगर को बुलाऊंगा, सौ चीजें करूंगा, and like that is that is a cost that I mean how do you, how do you account for that? How do you account for something like that? Yeah, especially with my shows, like my yeah. shows are all immersive installation, like you've seen all immersive mm-hmm. installation based. Like the art only works in the setting. Like there's this uh, very cool quote that I keep going back to by Virgil. and he basically says that a lot of the times it's not the art itself hmm but it's the setting of the art it's the four walls that you place it in and i like my entire thing is based off that is based on working on that so for me it's again what we're discussing now how do you because i can't sell the installation i've made right hmm. and sometimes you can when it's decently sized but for example the upside down room in the last show You remember that? Yeah. I can't sell that. I can't say room utha ke le jao. Ha. Uh-huh. So how do you put a value on that? But then obviously it it works in selling the art. Like the highest selling piece from that show was in that room. That Frida Kahlo wala photo. Mhm. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's always about striking that balance, no? Like how do you strike that balance between a a, a tangible a cost that's bringing you a very tangible real return in front of you hmm. like i spend x on printing it gives me x into 2 hmm. 
mm-hmm. because that print is gone to the client. Right, 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 right. Right, but anything else you build is lying in the factory. Okay, maybe we'll use it for something else. Use it for yeah. something else. Or yeah, even like the cost of an impression. Ki yeah. Main ek room ke andar gaya, and exactly. I see an upside room, upside down room, and I'm a potential buyer. Yeah. And now this triggers me to DM you two months later to make a purchase, mm-hmm. and that is the lingering impression I have. So you can't really actually yeah, you, right, can't, you can't yeah. really say ki yar bro like you, you know we spend like two three lakhs on this facade whatever ye bahut zada hai. because it has a way of uh, justifying itself yeah that's me looking at it currently tomorrow morning i'll wake up when i look at the accounts account yeah. sheet and i'm like oh my god this much this is costing this much okay maybe we can cut down on this hmm. like for example when i'm working on a show like this one next week it's been 6 months in planning at least more probably since april So when you're looking at it like that there'll be mornings where I'm like shit I need to cut down on my production because again in your head in your head that that the the commercial question always comes as a doubt mm-hmm. oh if this is not successful then what will you do you know so it's always that oh maybe I'll cut down on my production I'll cut down on my ideas of making it less based on photography which is mainly the thing that sells Mm. and then it's always about striking that balance as always like you know there's that always ex- existential question and this is the most this comes up as the most existential question with a show like this is okay cut this room down cut that room should we reduce this should we reduce that yeah basically because of this because it's not a it's not a direct return that you can see and that's the balance that we were talking about yeah creator entrepreneur that's somewhere you have to find that balance which is very difficult Yeah, because I think if you if you start an e-commerce drop shipping business, right? You're like, I will buy this good from China, whatever. Like this is how people do it. Like I'll buy a bookshelf from China, right, for ten thousand rupees, and I'll sell it for thirty thousand rupees. And like you, your shipping, whatever, beach me, you have to add something. Let's say, 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 let's say it's completely mathematical there is no art to it then you go and say oh but the way of his handling the business or cutting the cost that is an art when you go to an art show yeah it's like the economics technically comes last it's like cuz we assume that everything from the heart has been put into these photograph photographs or these paintings ab ye it's like a, now it's like a roll of a dice hua to hua nahi to nahi hua right but In the same way, venues also work. Like, just say, if I go and like, if I see someone putting up a new venue, like our mutual friend Kunal, he started a venue, right? Ham sab log koi bhi venue hoga dil dunia bhar mein. We all see an Instagram post or a story that is unrelated to the venue. Maybe it'll have a picture, like a corner picture of mm. the edge of the table with a coffee placed on it. But jo sabse zada maza hota na as a buyer or a customer. is getting converted from the instagram post yeah. that is made in like a you know like some helvetica font mein bana hua hai aise 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 and it says a gr display kar raha hai gr display kar raha hai gr display kar raha hai from that to the actual immersive experience of going to the venue and seeing that this was far bigger and more immersive than what the yeah. graphic promised i think that is what like physical space is master yeah ki there is a deliberate mystery to not show like a walk through or everything ek ek cheez yeah, yeah. i never I never put out photos and uh, images of my installations before the show is out. Yeah, yeah, never. So I let it organically come. Out. Even once the shows, like the opening, has happened, um, even then I wait till like maybe the last three days of the show um, to put out the images because I feel that a I'm lucky to work with like. friends who have like superb graphic skills mm-hmm. um so the graphics kind of bring you in but i still prefer that mystery that you're talking about that you know ki you come in there and you're surprised hmm so maybe you'll do like a very very like small teaser where you'll be able to see something very slightly mm-hmm. uh this is probably the first time we're going to do that like we planning to film the show before it starts mm-hmm. last time got the video also i don't know where it is i don't i don't think i have one also it's really but last time was a blast yeah but like imagine i don't have a film of that like the first one i filmed hmm 
लास्ट टाइम आई मेरी मेमोरी में तो है लाइक आई रिमेम्बर विविडली हाउ एवरी थिंग अराउंड मी वॉज सब लोग सेलिब्रेट कर रहे थे सब लोग मॉच कर रहे थे एंड देर इज समथिंग अबाउट वाइट क्यू स्पेस आर कम टू अप्रीशियट एवर सिंस आई बिकम फ्रेंड्स विद मेनी पीपल लाइक यू बिकॉज हमें लाइक इवन वन आई गो टू सम वन एंड दिस आई एम आई से आई एम गोइंग टू एन आर्ट शो दे डोंट नो वट इट मीन्स बिकॉज द आइडिया इज यू गो टू अ रूम एंड यू प्रिटेंड टू लुक एट पेंटिंग्स एंड बी यू हैव टू लुक लाइक योर इंटरेस्टेड ऐसे चिन पे हाथ रख के वर्स इज द कैन ऑफ आर्ट शोज एव अटेंडेड विद विद यू एंड मैनी फॉर अदर फ्रेंड्स विच आर लिटिल बिट मोर फंकी लिटिल बिट मोर वाइल्ड तो इट्स स्टिल सम ऑफ माई बेस्ट नाइट लाइफ लाइक हैंड्स डाउन या बिकॉज आई थिंक I mean, at least now speaking for myself and the people that I have worked with, the art shows I have participated in, we always try and create an atmosphere that's very open. You know, otherwise the art world, if you ask a person who doesn't have a clue, it has a perception that's very closed. You know, mm. that is very oh, it's a closed clique. It's you know, um, only people who know about it are invited. maybe not to art shows because most art shows are free you can walk in but to these art openings to um, you know the the inner workings of the art world and it's exactly like you're saying ki you you have to go stand like this white room fine china wear a suit you know dress mm. up there'll be like you know it's it's meant to exude a certain kind of message certain kind of uh, perception Mm. It's meant. It's always meant to intimidate you if you don't know. Correct, right? I think I've spoken to so many people who are always. I still sometimes get intimidated when I go to art openings like that. You know, I'm like, like I, I went recently and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I feel suffocated. Because you, there was atmosphere tense. Tha. Not just tense. It's very like you know, closed. You know, very. How do you like? Yeah, tense. Very, you know, suffocated. I felt suffocated. Huh. So how do you how do you break that? Because I know I've also been in rooms like that. My recent yeah. Last year I went to Mumbai at a gallery opening, and like and I was in like dirtyish clothes because I was running around doing podcasts, and my editor was even more dirty clothes. So I'm like, guy, where? And he had a backpack on. So we, I looked like an older college student. He looked like a younger college student, right? And like they they served the wine, and I'm bullying. But it still felt like if I dressed up well. and pretended to sort of say clever sentences about the art out loud perhaps i would get in, into that elite group of other people standing in sarees and suits who would say oh you're one of us hmm we accept you but wo mere ko wo cheez abhi bhi like like if i never look back i'm like i wonder how they would treat me differently if i spoke their language yeah and i think it's it's very subtle messaging like you asked how do you what is the difference with what mm. we do it's it's subtle and it's not just like it's where the only ones doing it i mean there's so many art shows that i've been to uh where this is not the case mm. um where you don't feel suffocated but it's subtle messaging right mm. where you replace a fine china with a red plastic cup and american dorm room <laughs> exactly right when you're drinking out of a plastic cup um do you think you like you don't have that this thing that oh i'm in a very you know i have to be very proper i have to mm. be in a suit so that's one two is what we do is we try and bring in a crowd that's not just art mm. you know so because i think we we exist in circles where there's so much overlapping you know musicians uh, artists other creators fashion yeah. youtube um that when this crowd comes together it's more the crowd than it is us so the fact that the invite list is not in a lock and key somewhere where it's only people coming because they have x amount of followers mm. you know i think fine i i'm not saying that's a bad thing to do mm. i think it's essential right like even when i'm inviting people i'm like oh you know this is a good thing it will it will get my show reach because of you know, course, at of the course. end of the day you put in so much work you want your show to be seen you want it to work so that's fine but if you combine those two if you just open it up a little bit keep it closed but also invite people who are not already within that circle you know so that's why even with my my shows i keep the opening private because if i 
invite my whole invite list and then keep it open then it's just too many people no one gets a great experience right and then i always try and do like um you know last time we did the closing which was completely different we did a uh, dhh closing right which was a crowd that normally might not have gone i don't know normally might not have gone to an unlikely unlikely is the unlikely. Word, yeah. a lot of people came up to me there and and said you know this is such a great experience we wouldn't have uh, seen something like this if it wasn't for the music um so the the idea is to kind of open it up using these different avenues you know mm. bring in have a fashion show right at your show. i haven't done this but maybe it's an idea have a fashion show while your exhibition is going on crazy right so again you have to find the right balance between still letting it look like what it is letting the art be the focus mm. versus it looking like a mela mm. and you got everything going on so that's not the goal either but once you find that balance and once basically you read the you know basically the lock and key which is the fine china still use right. fine china it's not uh, this thing on actual fine china but yeah matlab stainless steel ki plate mein mere ko bolunga ke acha nahi lagega like objectively haan. whatever you so, are eating that so as long as it's not kept in a lock and key you get that you get that very organic vibe hmm you know like and like i said it's very subtle messaging it's the red plastic cup it's the way you put out your invites hmm you know how it's going across um it's even sometimes who is reaching out to people on your behalf hmm. so all of that as long as you make it feel welcome like when we did the show in bombay you know you cannot miss this at method two months back everyone came and said to me it's such a welcoming environment hmm right and i feel that a lot of that was also the place we did it method ju was very very it's a new it's new you know there's a coffee shop gallery, yeah it feels very open it feels very welcoming but also just the fact that you could come wearing whatever there was no black tie there was no dress code there was no guest list checking at the door um you know acha art shows pe guest list bhi checking hoti hai ha i think so i've not been to one but i heard of one last week where there was guest list really yeah. but isn't like aren't openings and like aren't they supposed to be free for all public no sometimes they're private okay because it depends no you can't obviously your when you go to an art show the fnb is free hmm to so, bahut sare random so, log you can't jane. just cater to thousands of people abhi abhi faridabad mein social khula hai pehli baar so um we decided to go just to see what's happening and i i'd already gone in the day but it was very like dud khana wana theek tha ab humne khana nahi gaya when there for some cocktails but we were the only ones you know doing cocktails I was like what is happening here so come friday night and uh, we go and uh, it's it's me and three of my friends and we're all dudes ab hum sochte hum to yahan ke local hai like for example you live in one neighborhood of delhi hmm. and something close opens up to you close by so you know ki yaar i am just a neighbor i can walk in no problem so we go and you can see all your schoolmates all the people you ever met they all realize this god for second city has something new so they all have ended up there and me go on the bouncer is like sorry sir it's invite list only and i told mera mere doston ko bola yaar agar hamare ko yahan se reject kar diya na main na matlab night life pe participate karna chhod dunga because it'll be so and then obviously my mama just spotted me and like he's like let them in so it was so embarrassing and funny to be rejected from a place that is opened up in my city literally 5 minutes from where i live to be rejected in even a city in like in a an event in faridabad but then realized wahan pe wahan pe bhi aisa tha ki wo alcohol free thi sari ki sari so everyone's like ha- everyone's having too much of a great time too soon and you can already see people like losing their minds i'm like this is the problem i think this is why they pre select you know because otherwise people misbehave because once plus ye baat aur hoti hai na art show ki op- logo ko ye hack pata lag gaya na ki art show ki openings mein you know you get free food you know pre selected vibe like nice good fnb so everyone's like i'll just hack this world and they look at daily times they're like kya opening ho rahi kaise ho rahi they keep going yeah i think so it's also like from an experience perspective if we look back at my last show it was over two floors there were two separate entries yeah and um we were very late in opening and hum text laga rahe the something was falling you know just 
normal normal stuff that happens before <coughs> before you open a show but people started arriving on time mm. and my sister and my sister and another friend were supposed to perform over the piano and like a jazz uh, sort of performance um so i they were supposed to perform after the show opened because the doors were supposed to open people were supposed to come see it as as they entered then you know get a drink have some food um so i was like no no perform perform i'm not ready so by the time we got ready and they had finished performing the whole guest list had arrived <laughs> right and i had kept it very small because the the space there to do the opening was small because we hadn't taken that garden we had just mm-hmm. taken the courtyard so i had kept the guest list small but still about 150 200 people had come and so what happened was we opened the doors now you've come to see the art show we've all congregated once the doors open you go in hmm. so we had such a rush that i felt that that opening we couldn't you know like not all the viewers got a full experience hmm. like a lot of people came to me and said you know we'll come back we couldn't see the whole thing a lot of people didn't even realize there was an upstairs hmm. you know so sometimes a crowd that also we have to manage that you know that your viewers should get the experience that yeah the party the etc et is all extra mm. that you have space people will have a good time but also that they get the experience what they've actually come to see i think that's why again like i said sometimes there is a list as an invite only list because otherwise like 300 400 people 500 people will turn up and then what will you do you know oh. <laughs> like you cannot miss this though <laughs> closing we did inside no yeah 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 we did good, we tried good thing to do inside ha huh, we tried to do art like music inside the art ashna performed a, mm. a set on the closing someone picked up one of the bangshu's work po- pocketed left really they sold <laughs> the art ha ye cheez ho jati but i think that's the difference between art shows and museums because art shows are temporal in nature you have to sort of make sure ki unki immersion slow ho jaise koi see if you go to a museum like we know ki wo museum they offer guided tours in on google maps they'll say the people typically spend 2.5 mm-hmm. to 3.5 hours here there's several guides to so you have some time to experience the art but when it's an art show especially when you're getting a massive influx of people for a very small time you don't have the equipments and the know how that a museum does so you sort of have to wing it on your own every single time fir us cancer se ho sakta hai kuch log waqai mein art buyer ho ab aapko unko special attention deni of course because they are the ones who are buy your art So then how do you do that amid everyone coming to you and saying hi all the time I think in my own experience having witnessed four or five artists do the do their own openings it's probably toughest because your mind is everywhere yeah. yeah like I was making the list for the opening abhi 2 3 days back and like I I always invite like I invite my old school teachers I invite you know everybody that I have had a you know positive interaction with that has mm-hmm. had some impact on on me um and every time i do it i'm like oh you know i'm inviting them but then i was like i'll they'll come but it'll be like it, it'll be annoying that i can't have a proper interaction with them hmm because you know like i'll be talking to, the only ones i'll end up having a proper interaction with are the same 15 20 of my friends who are there till the end who hmm. you know who everyone behind the scenes helping yeah, you put it together huh? yeah because by the end of it that you yourself are so exhausted Because there's only so much you can keep that smile, you know, and say Hello thank G. you, thank Hi you. Hi Jay, how are you? So nice to see you. It's been seven years. I can see. But the way, the way to crack that, obviously, again, I've realized is, and this was a discussion we had before we started, is that you can't do it alone. Mm. You know, and that's what's difficult when you're an artist without a gallery. Um, is that. you have to put this structure together yourself and mm. obviously friends are always you know great yeah it's not like you're a performer and you can just show up yeah that's it yeah because like you said 300 people have come for the opening the opening is where most art shows sell most of the work so how do you, do you need to give them the experience otherwise they're not going to you know understand a lot of people buy art because they they relate to it they they see a meaning behind it they see a meaning of why it was hung up they want to understand the show some buy it for the aesthetic direct great so you have to cater to both those audiences so 
I always try and involve as many friends as I can, get them to help out with the sales and 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 the walkthroughs. And also, being a conceptual show, you want to give as many people the whole experience, which comes with a curated walkthrough. Hmm. So this time we work to kind of expand the team that will be doing that, so that there's multiple walkthroughs. Yeah, when hmm. there's only four of you, you have to kind of prioritize. Okay. If there are 10 people that come in an hour, not just the opening, generally also, you can only take maybe eight. Mm. But if 20 people come, you can only take maybe eight. Right? Whether mm. they're the first eight that come, or you, 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 you're like, okay, I'll take this person, I'll take that person. So that is also a disservice to the other people who are coming. Mm. The idea is not just to sell the work. That's important. But the idea is also that everybody gets an experience. That the experience is in their mind. That they go home like, oh, this is. something that i enjoyed coming to this is a good use of my time so that's why we kind of expanded the team also to the sales team is still the size as it was last year hmm. we've actually brought in people who will give walk throughs to everybody hmm. regardless irrespective. of irrespective whether they come to buy or not buy. yeah ah. whether it's a 12 year old or a 40 year old or is it 12 year old is not going to buy hmm so, so we still want to give tw- uh, th- that 12 year old the walk through interesting so it it is becoming methodical it's not like art is just everything I, i have an experience to share which i think maybe help understand this a little better for everyone else and 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 me as well uh there's this a uh, fishing village off the coast of off barcelona 100 km dur hai lagbhag it's called cadaques it's where uh, salvador dali and his wife lived in his last days so i actually visited his house what i noticed was interesting is because it's a house and you know it's not a like the spanish are not known for elaborate bungalows mm. the way the british are or say even like the royals of jaipur are they're bahut bade hote hain the spanish have relatively smaller homes but done very tastefully and they're all like typical jo bahar se white concrete hote ekdam safed safed hote you know those those greek towns that you see in postcards spain has a bunch of those white villages so <coughs> the house is white from the outside what they did is so you went to buy the ticket and they would only take groups of eight people at once eight or nine aur ghar bahut bada hai and they would have two or three staff members jo curated walk throughs denge ghar ke in english french and spanish so since i was the only one in english and everyone else understood spanish and french she would spend time explaining everything in spanish and french and then turn to Very me good. and i'm like of course it's got joke banate hain and you know like just let's just keep going and explain it in english what i noticed is because the space was so small agar wo free for all hota the house would be guaranteed destroyed um free for all as in like agar sab log aa jate like you bought a ticket and everyone sort of could walk in it would be destroyed like in museums they would have to place jo kya bolte hain installation ke security experts hote hain everywhere but because there was just eight of us in sometimes very narrow spaces we had a half an hour slot and then where the swimming pool was and the garden was where could we we would sort of free roam hmm. at the end of the tour because it had enough space it was wide enough but i think maybe you can follow that kind of approach no so that's what we did in the first show the first show in 2020 Timed. 2021 dark perception because it was about 2 months after the that really bad second wave in india ha the delta wave yeah ha um we were only allowing five people in at a time mm and <coughs> when we planned it we planned it because of covid but then when we started doing it like after the first day we were like this is the best thing we could have done um but that also worked really well because that show the theme of that show was control it was about how you're subconsciously or consciously controlled by many factors mm. so the whole show was controlled you go to the second show the second show is about choice right So there again, the curated walks worked because we explained we let the viewer choose where they were, what room they wanted to enter, what was the sequence they wanted to show stuff, see stuff. Um, but it was still like in the first show, everything was timed, so you could only see a photo for X amount of time. Sure. After that, you couldn't see it, so they had no option but to move on. Um, with the second one, everything was on at all times. It's the same case here. So the first. blueprint for this show uh upman was that everything is timed we'll only send 10 people in at a time but then when i thought about it it's like okay i see art very fast hmm right 
But when I go with my girlfriend to see art shows, mm. she sees art much slower. Right. So everyone has their own, and this is one of my core these things is that art is so subjective. Right. Mm. It's so subjective. So to put in any rules, to put in any time limitations, etc., sometimes can be a massive disservice. I see. You see, so that's what you're kind of contending with. Also, is like for me, if I want the experience to deliver a hundred percent, then I do it like a show. Like mm. you're going to watch a twenty-minute movie, right? But then, maybe someone else going for that show and seeing a photo in that setting for twenty minutes, just looking at that same photo, mm. will will take away something completely different than I intended. And that's something that I love about my shows is that I don't do captions. I do small explanations of text. Like last time, we just had questions. This time, yeah. we've gone a little deeper. We also had the passage from Shantaram. Yeah. So we put in these kind of indicators as to what I mean. But mm. the main thing I want people to do is see the context of what I've put it of what I've put. This is the context of the concept. But I'm not saying okay, one plus one is two. You come to that conclusion. Whether you come to the conclusion that I've said it's two. Or you think that's three, or you think that's four, or you think it's one. Hmm. That's up to you. Art is subjective. You take it how you want it. You. But it's you, against the rule of math. Huh? I was never good at maths. Maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I barely passed. On that, I didn't do. <laughs> yeah. No. Eleventh, me. The my teacher came to my parents. She's like, listen, he's really good at all other subjects, but I think this subject is not his strength. But it sort of messes you up for life because it's a. self fulfilling proof yeah. no prophecy kya bolte hain usko so you think you're bad at math so you you actually apply yourself less at math and then you think oh wow evidence proves i'm actually bad at math so it self mm. iska i found a solution for it but it's really hard it's like this guy is, who's an entrepreneur he's like do so much mental math all the time then you actually aapke man ki reasoning ye ho jaye i'm really good at math mm. that's the only way i even if i got that mental reasoning there are many transcripts <laughs> that that will disprove the reasoning <laughs> with one look what were you good at in school like what were you like something like innately passionate about school mein um i i really enjoyed history but that maybe i mean i had a really good teacher hmm um i enjoyed history i enjoyed english literature you know i look back at it and i'm like mm, i enjoyed that but i wasn't a big fan of academics hmm. like i was not i did football. not enjoy it i love football I loved you know to be honest even I was not very good at art in school because mm. art as it's taught in ISC is determined by a drawing 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 hoti hai na art drawing you tell me now also I'll struggle yeah, and it's drawing yeah. but it's drawing to the exact t right which is tracing it's tracing not, it's not copying, tracing copying it's um, still life acha right so draw this glass okay you know so again now It's not. I wouldn't agree with that definition of art that you can get ninety marks because I drew that exact thing exactly as oh, it was. It was a subject that you would get marks in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from in my school in CBSE, it was all um, like extracurricular. Tha, no, no. Know. I had in my twelfth, I had English, history, pol science, um, art, and geography. Ah. Uh. So I stayed very far from math, science, uh. eco. I was choosing between geography and Hindi, and then I chose geography because Same I did now. well in Hindi in my tenth. I should take yeah. note because I didn't do well in geography in my twelfth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I stopped doing any because I went to commerce instead because in my school, there was a lot of stigma about arts. Ke khilaf, na. Like people were people would re- now it's changed. Like now mm. it's very cool to be in the arts because I guess we are still from the same generation that saw a jo clear. We were the, probably the last generation that saw. ये साइंस का स्टूडेंट है ये नॉन ये मेड का स्टूडेंट है या आर्ट्स का स्टूडेंट आई थिंक इट्स इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ लाइक ऑल मॉडल नाउ बट या आई आई थिंक आई आई वुड हैव आल्सो लव डूइंग हिंदी ब्रो हिंदी वाज हिंदी टॉट इन स्कूल इज सो गुड बिकॉज मैं समटाइम्स आई गो आउट एंड आई सी लाइक सम पीपल विल से ये क्या लिखा है एंड देव टेकन हिंदी ऑल देर लाइफ एंड आई लाइक हाउ इज दैट पॉसिबल हाउ इज दैट लाइक लॉस टू अस बट यू नो ऑल्सो नॉट हैविंग स्टडीड इट in the 11th and 12th it had a massive impact so awesome. when i was a kid when i was a kid i we only used to speak in hindi at home mm. only both me and my sisters so like if you watch old uh, you know vhs tapes uh-huh. you know, homemade tapes 
वे ओनली स्पीकिंग हिंदी देन वेर लाइक वेट स्टेप्स कहाँ पे लाइक वॉट लाइक लेकिन नो दो ओल्ड ओल्ड वीडियो कैमरा सोनी वीडियो कैमरा के टेप्स सो लाइक वेन आई वॉट्स बैक आई एम ओनली स्पीकिंग हिंदी एंड देन आई थिंक इट वॉज इन द फर्स्ट ग्रेड वेर वन ऑफ बोथ मी एंड माई सिस्टर द क्लास टीचर सेट लिसन टोल माई पेरेंट्स सेट लिसन यू नीड टू स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग लिल बिट ऑफ इंग्लिश एट होम बिकॉज दे ओनली स्पीक हिंदी एंड देन लाइक द इंग्लिश इज कम्प्लीटली टैंकिंग सो देन वी स्विचड because we had to improve our english we switched to speaking more english and then i was fine with both and then the fact that i didn't take hindi which is something i regret even though i said oh i'm not taking it as a subject hmm. but i'll still you know i mean the study it at hai, home yeah. there's that although spoken hindi fine but the reading and all it declined then yeah. it i not the reading but even my spoken hindi uh, improved once i started listening to मैंने ये बिल्कुल एक्सपेक्ट नहीं किया था। I'm telling the truth, dude. I'm telling the truth. Like, like, you know, having not studied Hindi, then going to London, spending four years there. गंदे इलाके से। So be- be- before I started listening to this DHH, I I was listening to like like I said because I used to miss home, so I started listening to a lot of like. Indian music, which I didn't used to listen to before. Okay, that improved it. Then I got more into it. You know, like now, now all these guys are this my friends. This is your idols, basically. Yeah, it's reverse. <laughs> But it's a good thing. It's basically, you know, it's like goes to show that so like you take away so many different things from from art. Right, it's the same mm. thing, right? Because I'm listening to it, I'm thinking about it in a certain way. Mm. It's improving my language. and there are some fantastic lyricists now in the dhh yeah. scene jo shayad hindi ki teacher se better hindi produce karte hain the lyrics ke andar like if you like i've heard so many new words obviously it's a mishmash because it's a yeah. it's a part of our generation also to wo kuch english word use karenge kuch hindi karenge <coughs> but you, i never thought about dhh as a language improver but that that's so true it's a language no hmm. it's a language it's a it's a i mean if you look at it as a subculture as a genre it's capturing the language of our generation of of a certain people mm. you know of us as a people you know i mean all music is like that all art is like that but it's just it's an interesting this is the link because when we were talking about how subjective art is how different timings while looking at art mm. um can can mean different things for people i was like oh this is you know a link that i i got that i used and it's 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 made me speak hindi much more fluently much better you know even though we spoke it at home but it's a whole different it's a different language so to say like i'm saying jaise ki hum bhi hindi mein baat karte hain ghar pe par usme we always yaar hum chocolate ko kya bolenge english mein nahi bol sakte So we still sprinkle it in, and I think then, at first you speak your parents Hindi, yeah. then you grow up, then you bring in your own Hindi, then you grow up even more, and you start hanging out with artists and cultures, then you bring in even more Hindi. Yeah. Then your Hindi is so different than everyone else around you. Then you have to keep going to the subculture to keep understanding it more and more. So, मैं अब अगर बात करता हूँ किसी से और वो एक ऐसी बात बोलता है जो I think मैं अपने पेरेंट्स को बोलूँगा ना कि वो एक हिंदी वर्ड है तो वो नहीं समझेंगे और लाइक इट्स अ हिंग्लिश वर्ड दे वुड नेवर गेट इट बट आई आई फील लाइक इट्स अ वेरी नेचुरल पार्ट ऑफ आवर लाइफ लाइक ये बोलना दिल्ली में सीन कैन कर दे लाइक आई मीन आर लाइक आर जनरेशन नोज कैप इज योर लाइंग बट सीन कैन करना बाई सीन कैन है दैट सच अ डेली हिंदी थिंग टू से लाइक दो आर टू इंग्लिश वर्ड्स थिंकिंग अबाउट दैम इन हिंदी राइट राइट और सेंकि ब्रो सीन कैन है मेरा तो ऑफ लग रहा है बहुत बहुत सारी चीजें लिल सल्टीज लाइक ब्रो सीन कैन दे ऑल इंग्लिश सो या यू राइट यू राइट यू राइट दे आर ऑल या 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 सो इट्स इट्स लाइक इट्स इट्स वेरी कूल टू लुक एट ऑल लाइक आर्ट ऑल म्यूजिक इफ यू लुक एट इट एज अ लैंग्वेज वेरी कूल टू लाइक एक्सप्लोर इट लाइक दैट बिकॉज़ इट्स ऑल अबाउट लाइक हाउ यू आर थिंकिंग अबाउट इट नो I think when I was listening to too much DHH, you no, know, it definitely makes me like very me against the world. I will do everything. 
Then I think when DHH expanded and had like more, like basically more representation than just like trying to get up to the top and like m other wacky stuff also, then you're like, okay, this is expanding so much. In five, six years, we're gonna have proper philosophical like rappers in DHH. That's what drew me to maybe not the whole genre, but the independent part of the genre before I even became friends with the guys whose mm. music I listened to. It was the fact that they were, their music was reflecting their reality. Hmm. Right. They were talking about stuff that's around them. Like who? Like all of them, you know, like uh, Karun, Sumit, Udbhav, like they were all, their music was about what was happening to them, what is around them uh, most of the time. Mm -hmm. And I found it very refreshing. And they were like, okay, we want to say this, so we're going to say it. Hmm. You know, unabashed, no industry yeah. pressure per se. Yeah. yeah, and that drew because b before I started jumped into this music, I was heavily into UK rap and UK drill, UK drill, and that for me was becoming too much of the same thing. It was becoming hmm. too much of uh, "Ladki Paisa Gadi." Ladki Paisa Gadi. What is it? Honey Singh. But uh, tell me, like you know, when I I uh, recently came to London and I was in Shore Ditch and I heard sh like drill particularly as a genre and I asked my sister what is this scene and I remember you were probably the first one who played a rumble in one of our scenes I forgot when you played rumble once and I remember like knowing who is this song and you told me that drill is like very popular in the UK I'm surprised that in like America mein, uh, when I was studying the Migos was popping up hmm. massively or yeah, SoundCloud and mumble rap. And now it's a different evolution of rap and hip hop in the USA where you've got people like Kendrick Lamar and everyone else, not an expert on hip hop. But I'm not surprised. I'm not sure why UK is like a drill. Like why is drill like the main genre there? I think again, it's, I, again, going back, I switched from listening to US rap to UK rap because again, I felt it was, I, it was my feeling that this is authentic stuff, mm. right? Like the first grime song I remember listening to Stormzy in mm. a tracksuit rapping in a park. Mm. You know, shut up. It's, like, it's I think still his best song, still one of the coolest videos, probably shot on like an iPhone. Mm. Him, his 15 friends rapping in the park. So, grime or drill mein kya hai? So grime is more, is like closer to what we would say, you know, is the hip hop, like rap, sort of, you know, more towards, if if it was a scale, it would be sort of sent in the middle between pop and hardcore rap. Okay. Drill is closer to hardcore rap. So drill is, you know, very hard beats mm. and very like uh, rough, aggressive rapping. Mm. Okay. Okay. So drill, again, like... I don't listen to much drill. I didn't listen to much drill even when I was like in London. It was still, you know, the UK rap, Dave, Central C. Like mm -hmm. I have, I now have that South Asian playlist on, on Spotify, which is 24 hours long. I had a similar one on Apple Music, mm. which I have lost. You public I've, a nice playlist, no? Huh? You cre create one playlist every month. Yeah, that's separate. Right? This one, I, yeah. this one is a continuous thing. Okay. So I had one like that for, um, UK rap, which I lost because I lost my Apple Music account. Mm. Um, but again, it it it's like it comes from what they are seeing. Now it was their own interpretation, their own sort of music. It was different from mm. America. Now a lot of people have tried drill in America. It hasn't worked. It worked to a decent extent, but mm. not to the extent that it's worked in the UK. Mm. You know, and even me, I've I did one module in college about the history of hip hop. So even I'm not an expert, I could be wrong. But I feel it's Kya very... Is it log Instagram page shuru kar hain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel that it's very, you know, related to your own surrounding. Mm. You know, and, and heavily inspired by the people that have come before. So like the godfathers of grime, right? Grime is, again, different to traditional, like your Drake, Travis hip hop. Um, it would, I would say, is a is a you know hybrid of um, drill and and like rap rap. Mm -hmm. So 
the godfathers of crime was skepta and jme okay and i don't know if you heard skepta shut down no. so it was all it was all in the uk it was a very very uh, small scene it was a very underground scene hmm you know and then suddenly it just like it had its following it had its core following but it just suddenly around 2013 14 15 exploded and i remember like for me watching that stormzy video and listening to that song was the beginning of listening to that for about 8 years mm. even now i listen to it it's like my second genre that i listen to after our own music our own extensive dhh list yes <laughs> it's so funny to be friends with so many living dhh artists kyunki wo har sa matlab they they take out eps aur tum unke gaane sunte ho and you forget that they're your friends you listen to them as an artist then you meet them and they're real humans with like yeah. bodies and feelings and it's so weird because maybe kal jab prx ki hawa homing thi we we skip each other by like 2 minutes when they go phone kar raha tha to i go and i see karun udbhav and bhakti standing there meri aadat hai koi bhi unki nay achievement hoti hai na main pehle aake unko hi karne se pehle congratulate karta hu congratulate congratulations on your last job you know ne kara hai main wahan se bhagte hue maine congratulations on 3.2 million views wo dono dar gaye ki kaun aaya hai insaan but then it was it was crazy how like you know these people have real lives but then you can listen to them independent of knowing it that you know yeah. them it's so weird like i don't know kuch like how people make that distinction but when i listen to bagi munda i know thinking ki main main bagi munda ko janta hu aur main uska chill kar raha hu i'm thinking ki ye ek gana hai bas that i'm listening exactly you know like it's it's weird like i have music on in my shower when i'm showering mm. all the time right and then suddenly a song is playing and now you know the person who's singing it and you're like <laughs> this is a bit weird <laughs> so maybe i should change the song ah. so you know that it's it's still a it's still like you know because music is so personal yeah you know it's like everywhere you're listening to music so much like almost all the time uh i think it's a very weird not a weird but nicely weird crossroads yeah sometimes like i'm waking up not happy sad man nahi hota uthne ka and then i'm like i'm still going to the shower and fir main galti se on repeat ko shuffle pe chala deta hu So okay I like the succession theme because you know it's setting your day up for this orchestra and pianos are less suggestive ekdam pe memphis munde aata hai pacchi pe pakka ko aur fir bolo to bro just look up bro abhi uthte nahi kar sakta hai so yeah man like wo kaun sa meme hai if your if your uh, shuffle playlist like all sat together and had like this one and like two uh, yeah. pack all together because because we all have like different tastes but um You you lived in the UK for a while. Um, so Jay, what did you notice specific about like like maybe a South Asian identity? Because you had enough time living there. You went there as like a teen, then came back at twenty two, twenty one. But there are other Indians there also who were sort of born there and stuff. And in your interactions as well, what do you think? What do you could you rough, roughly ascertain what they wanted? What they were listening to? Did you make friends in in that community? Yeah, I actually I made a lot of friends. who were indian but had never lived in india hmm you know because of the place i stayed in in my first year because i was supposed to have a gap year hmm you know i injured my eye and all that just before i applied for college right and then i um was supposed to have a gap year last minute decided what am i going to do sitting around for a year how many chandni chowk photoshop photo walks will i do <laughs> At that time, I was not into art at all. I just hurt myself, no. So I was, I had put down the camera. It had been six, eight months. Yeah, just doing what? Just living, existing. Yeah, I mean, I went like, I went through a really rough period after I hurt myself. So like, mm. I was, I, you know, because what happens is when you're in the twelfth, when you're about to, you know, give your board exams, uh, applying for college and all that, it seems like that's it. If you don't do well now, but your finish, your life is finished, mm. right? Even though there was, for me, luckily there was not that outside pressure, like from my parents, from even from my school, from pe- my friends, there was no, mm. there was that pressure wasn't there that you know this is it. Um, it felt like that. It just somehow when once I got hurt, it's an I was age like, thing, also. Yeah, and once I got hurt, I was like, oh my god, this is having an impact on. You know, I couldn't read properly. I was in yeah. pain for a lot of. The baggy, but you're optimistic in future. के बारे में और you were like playing yeah, with this. Yeah, so I was kind of just for six months doing nothing. Mm. I I love to do two things by the end of my school. Uh, three football was and is still one of my main passions. I used to shoot, 
um, 10 meter air pistol mm. and i was doing decently well and i had shot in a couple of nationals um and i used to do uh, photography these two things actually even more than playing football mm. were the main things i used to do both stopped once you, i got you hurt. can't shoot a pistol now uh i can i probably can the mm. why i don't is i put it down for 6 months that went to uni became a year year and a half and that is something that requires so much practice so much discipline that mm. once you've put it down it's very difficult to mm. pick it up you know it's not just keep you you pick it up and you shoot it you have to mm. hold it there's a whole process you have to do the whole practice so i never went back to it mm. so just before i went to college and that contributed to the fact that i so last minute just i was like okay i'm going to apply i got into king got into soas decided to go to kings to study religion again Again, you did religion, but I college me. So I did it for a year because I was, you know, just I was like, okay, I want to go to Kings. I think it's a it's a great college. Let me go there, regardless of what I. What did you study? Comparative religion. I did re- religion, politics, society. Crazy. It was basically theology, almost. Mm. Um, again, it wasn't something that I was deeply interested in. Mm. You know, it wasn't something that I wanted to study. Um, I. But again, just the circumstance made me make that last minute decision. So, anyways, where we started the story was. But no, I'm more fascinated by this. Huh. So, like, because I I also studied religion in college along along with advertising. You know, so there's a college in art and sciences focus that you can do. So I chose philosophy first. Got really bored of it. Went to religion and loved it. So, what was that like for you? So for me, what happened was like we've already discussed. I was not. I've never been great hmm. in the classroom. Hmm. So one of the reasons I have never studied art is because I'm scared actually that I'll go into the cl- classroom and I'll start disliking this and it's something that I don't want to do. It's going to rob you of your instinct. Yeah. Mm. So it became too heavy for me. Mm. Like I just I was not being able to grasp all of it. Mm. All the reading this that again this is still in the year where I'm still dealing getting with getting used to to reading with one eye. Um So by the time the end of the year came I spoke to my parents I was like I think I need to m- make a change because more than anything else I'm not going to have a good experience over the next 2 years. Hmm. You know so before I gave my exams I and religion I will say has some of the highest required readings. Yeah. Possibly. And it's it's yeah. very like you have to go really deep. Yeah it's it's like to me literally you have to read all of the religious books all of the commentaries on yeah. them all of commentaries ke upar commentaries make notes and answer questions it is very very academic yeah and 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 what i realized was that all of the other people in my class this was what they were really interested in and that's what you you have to be that way if you want to study something that you need to give in give so much time to right so then i switched to to again at this point i still not picked up the camera still not interested in art then i switched to uh I remember I had applied for politics to SOAS. Mm. I had got in before I went to Kings. So I reapplied there. Mm. They said you drop a year and you start again. So I did that. And there what your the, the South Asian identity was very strong in SOAS because it's mm. school of oriental and african studies but it's it's a very very you know uh Asian African heavy university. Um in terms of populace as well as in terms of um course materials like you you the focus is on that region so people from that region also go there right um so there it was a very so i was i was seeing two identities one was the um business school identity in south asians and then there was the heavily political Mm-hmm. um you know socio political identity in two different groups which is yeah. very interesting growing up in india you never think of yourself as a brown man until you go abroad yeah uh, that i mean mm-hmm. when you go abroad alone mm-hmm. when you go abroad with your parents and all you're tourist yeah yeah moj and then you go abroad alone and then you know people ask you questions like how do you speak english so well mm-hmm. and i'm sitting there thinking yeah, i can probably speak it better than you <laughs> because we're taught we're taught so well here you know like i mean um and someone once asked me in kings oh uh, are there elephants so that you know there's that i think everyone who's gone abroad to study has been yeah. asked some absurd question like this yeah like people still like i remember in my college was like 
curry is an is an opening statement yeah or an a mode of inquiry into your culture but if you really think about it ek indian ko curry represent karti hai kya sahi mein matlab so i will say that in london luckily you don't have that much of a it was not racist it was just general inquiry ha it was but in when you go to london you don't have that much of a you know no, like uh, there's not that much of a mystery about india because mm. there are so many indians there so right. that way i i had it like chicken tikka masala is the national dish for god's sake yeah yeah um but what i'm finding interesting now is that you know when you're in college it's more about getting through the college and having a good time so i wasn't even thinking about stuff like you know the south asian identity the, mm. this that now that i've left not watching rizamud movies <laughs> I was listening to Rizavan music, Haan, which is like to, underrated. Yeah. बहुत कम लोगों को पता है उसके बारे में. Yeah. yeah. So that uh, for that album, yeah. Um, you know, there was I think T two T two was a song on it. Okay. And it's I forgot the I'll I'll, I'll show it to you. I forgot the name of the album. Hmm. Um, but I was listening to his music, and now that I've left, and I think when you're because I was not in love with what I was studying. and i was very obviously because of covid i was at after kings at 3 months of uni and then i did it all online because yeah. of covid horrible for that generation of college students yeah like imagine my first year was 1920 hey 2019 20 acha oh acha 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 2019 20 20 so i did the first semester loved it second semester i went back mid jan mm. first week of feb i had come to india mm. uh, for a semester break I fell ill. I had come mm-hmm. packed for a week. I fell ill, um, so extended my stay by a week. By the end of that week, I had booked my ticket, and I was like, I don't think I should go. Because mm-hmm. if I had gone, I wouldn't. I would have had to stay the whole lockdown there, which uh, you know, was a bit much. My sister stayed that whole duration voluntarily. Yeah. It was very rough. Yeah, बहुत मुश्किल था. But now that I'm not there, and whenever I do go, and I think this is something that that. is so prevalent with when you're doing stuff like creative work music art um i i don't know i sometimes feel that the identity is much more prevalent there like you know yeah. you see the south asian artists you see this um, you know they label themselves more particularly as yeah, south asian artists the boiler room south hall like that uh-huh. that, that was so good young singh wala ha huh, so uh-huh. i i i watched um, i watched all of that so i'm seeing it from afar mm-hmm. but i'm finding it more interesting and i'm seeing that identity more when i'm seeing it from afar but that's probably because i was not even into art into creative stuff back then mm. you know i i'm pretty sure if i go back now that it will be more pre- prevalent and i'll be able to you know explore that much more mm. i also think this is just my opinion that if we go down the whole rabbit hole of ki hum kaun hai south asians i think it'll only work when we're in a place that is outside of india mm. because there is no reason to think about us being a south asian yeah. or being brown in india because everyone is brown like realistically everyone is brown i mean you know matlab ethnically hum log thoda thoda alag dikhte hain like someone from the northeast and someone from uh, tamil nadu looks very different someone from rajasthan and i don't know like somewhere someone from a tribal region looks very different in that say but hum, we're all brown but um yeah i don't know because sometimes i've also been needlessly dragged into uh, south asian uh, politization when i was mm. in college mm. i would felt feel very weird like there was yeah. this indian frat that was made up all south asians and they had basically reappropriated random words from from our own vocabulary and they said we all stand for shakti ab tum hindi bolte aaye ho zindagi bhar ab tum ab suddenly shakti ke naare laga rahe ho so it was too weird for me so i, I obviously left the frat and founded a random frat <coughs> but it's um, also when you are abroad it's also a, there's a sense of belonging no that's why you see so many people hanging out with other people from their home countries mm-hmm. there's a sense of belonging you're away you know for most people it's the first time you're out of yeah. i think you're, you're away scared, from home lonely, yeah alone. F- like even like in a place like london you feel very small in a big city sometimes mm-hmm. you know so i think it's it gives that sense of belonging that's why it's so prevalent but what i love about london is you can transport yourself from one world to the other With just one tube, yeah. but it's remarkable how that's done. Then I was staying in Zone Two in West London, or see the Bank Street to throw zindagi alag, Oxford Circle to zindagi alag, and you can sort of enter a metropolis as you want and then escape. Yeah, 
दैट आई थिंक दैट इज वाई आई स्टिल थिंक कि कुछ भी होता रहे कॉस्ट भी बढ़ती रहे इट इज़ वन ऑफ द लवलीस्ट सिटीज टू लिव इन एंड फुलफिल योर एम्बिशन एंड हम लोग बहुत बात कर रहे थे वन आई वॉज नन शलिंग ब्रो की यहाँ तो कुछ भी पॉसिबल है यहाँ तो कुछ भी हो सकता है एंड बाहर रिपोर्ट्स आ रही हैं कि बहुत टैक्सेशन है बहुत दिक्कतें हैं आई थिंक देर इज अर देर इज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एनर्जी दैट पीपल हैव लाइक इवन दो थिंग्स आर नॉट इज गुड इफ यू गो देर and you're like a protagonist and you listen to the right music in your ears you can be someone but that's relevant anyway no pata hmm, nahi i don't know um but i get what you're saying it is it is one of those cities where where you f- where if you feel that if you can if you just like exactly what you're saying if you put on that music hmm. like the eye of the tiger music uh-huh. you can just do anything I, but yeah. i would i would say that 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 in most places if you get into that mindset you can conquer anywhere that's true that's true like i think with delhi i feel very like in the zone when i'm usually sitting in a car seat and listening to music yeah. going from places it's a very aap apne commute mein soch rahe hote ho delhi mein you don't sit down in a restaurant and think you are you know i can i think i can make something in this scene because delhi weirdly is very opulent it's very grand in a lot of ways like when i recently went to jaipur and i told you bro ki to jaipur is like fucking like f- massive palaces massive cafes massive restaurants massive bars you know delhi bachcha laga uske samne but then you sort of drive through jaipur and you realize that's all there is there's cafes and bars like a uh, and also the food was like but otherwise it was decent i enjoyed the food when i went yeah did you go to called tapri i was told by yeah. a friend ki tapri jana chahiye because like it's tapri. one of the better places yeah. to eat Yeah, but I didn't go. I just went to one nice bar and just stood there, chilled there. Then went to Palladio, that was nice. And then sort of, I think it's a good place to live in for like a month hmm. and do everything. But then you'll get bored. But do you do you feel like when you go to places, you've traveled quite a bit this year. Hmm. Do you feel like you feel very quickly that you can live in a particular place, or do you uh, think it's only few places that give you that feeling? लाइक मैं बरेली गया मेरा मन नहीं करा मैं इवन देहरादून गया आई थिंक आई डिन लाइक लाइक इट आई लव देहरादून या एज अ सिटी उसके आसपास के एरियाज ठीक है आई हैव देहरादून इज नोस्टैल्जिया फॉर मी व्हाई इज दैट स्कूल अच्छा हां ऑफ कोर्स बट तू तो तू यू वेंट टू लैंडोर नो लाइक लैंडोर में तो है दून कहां है नहीं नीचे है इट्स इन इट्स इन द कैंट अच्छा ओके ओके नो बिकॉज़ आई रिमेंबर व्हेन आई वाज वॉकिंग इन लैंडोर इट सेड दून स्कूल दिस वे लाइक लैंडोर इज क्लोजर टू मसूरी नो ओके सो वेयर इज दून देन Doon is proper there. Doon, not proper. It's in the cant, so it's like it'll take you ten minutes to get to proper there, like pro- okay. into the city. Yeah, I I love Bangalore. Bangalore, मेरे को इतना बढ़िया लगा ना. I wish I would have reasons to go there more. Bangalore is nice weather. Everyone's nice to you. Um, I've not actually spent enough time in Bangalore. Let's go to the real good places: Kabban Park, Ulsur Lake, Ul Ulsur Lake, जो भी उसका नाम है. Um, It's legendary. Bombay, like, Bombay is like very love and hate because Bombay me work करने जाता हूँ परसों भी जा रहा हूँ Bombay काम करने के लिए Bombay me like there's no rest in the heart. I really liked it. I went for work only. हाँ huh. but I felt weirdly rested. Hmm. Like I felt weirdly like like calm even though I was like putting we were putting together a show which is normally so stressful and hectic. I really like Bombay. I like hmm. the vibe. I like the people. I think in Bombay I'm always reminded of. कट थ्रोट कॉम्पिटिशन बिकॉज इट इज़ अ सिटी दैट थ्राइव ऑन लाइक मीडिया एम्पायर और ये सब चीज़ें नॉट एट रेस्ट एनी वेयर मैं कहीं पर भी चला जाऊँ मे बी लाइक मे बी वन आई एम लाइक कम्प्लीटली फॉरन लाइक इन स्पेन वर आई डो द लैंग्वेज लाइक दैर इज द केस बट आई डो वट वट गिवज यू कम्फर्ट एंड रिलीफ लाइक वेर आर यू एट होम डिफिकल्ट आई डोंट नो I I don't think there's particular places that make me feel like that. Is it people? It's people and it's also activities. Like, okay. Like if I'm playing football, hmm. I just doesn't matter kahan pe hai. Regardless of what's happening to me outside, hmm you're okay. Whether whether it's something with work, whether it's something personal, it's something or the other, I don't Like all that goes away for the two hours that I'm playing. 
right like like for example now working on this show it's been very stressful at times and normally i would have played three four times a week i've been injured for six months so i've not played hmm. which is a massive this thing and then obviously people so i think for everyone that for me people is home rather than a place i don't get overly attached to like places um hmm. like when we had to move three three and a half years back we had to move i was packed within a day like my room mm. at least was packed within a day uh i don't get attached to places like that mm. but delhi london uh and bombay mm. i felt that's why i really like bombay because i i felt like mm, i could live here mm. and then obviously like if it was possible to live inside ranthambore i could do that also yeah 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 wo to khair like i think i think if you can have great interior is great food great indoors and the kind of company of 20 people that you can sort of circulate har hafte mein teen char log teen char log right and the great outdoors i think it also make you a more calm person yeah and i think we need that calmness yeah. because i remember i i read a quote somewhere that said you know life in the city can draw people to um crime corruption psychoanalysis and drugs because there's too many right angle structures there's too many people on to each other we're always एक जो अनब्रोकन ट्री लाइन होती है ना आंखों के सामने we are defined by our comparisons you know that that when i'm for example buying something mm. it's somewhere in my head i'm thinking i'm buying it because oh this one was wearing it or that one was wearing it i'm always relating or comparing to something and i'm always being compared by other people mm. right like you are always being compared by other people at all times right everyone has a certain image of you everyone has a certain perspective of you and all those things then reflect on yourself yeah you know so so that's i think it's very prevalent in in places with a lot of structure look i think it's also prevalent in india aapko to log neighbor se compare kar lete hain neighbor ke bete se compare kar lete hain everywhere yeah. or like if you whether we like it or not as young people who have a public profile we are defined by our work yeah to hamare ko jo aur log hai unse compare kar lete hain it's rarely collaboration it's still like we they want to yeah. see ki aap iske insaan ke regard mein kahan stand karte ho you know um, yeah it's all i mean it's it's one of the founding like it's one of the foundations that you're given when you're in in school no that's how you judge things from being good and bad you you do it relative to each wherever yeah. you are there's the you know the क्लास मॉनिटर इज द बेस्ट स्टूडेंट द गोल्ड स्टार यू नो खेलो कूदो बनो नवाब नो सॉरी पढ़ो लिखो बनो नवाब खेलो कूदो बनो खराब ये लाइन और समथिंग याज दैट यू नो योर बींग कंपेयर एट ऑल टाइम्स इट्स इम्पॉसिबल नॉट टू बी कंपेयर एट ऑल टाइम्स right it's impossible for me to drink diet coke and not somewhere in my head be thinking oh it is comparatively like something else it does mm. it happens but this show that i'm doing is kind of just about like all my shows i'm not saying oh you are being compared stop being compared you know get rid of all the comparisons do this to that i'm just suggesting that it's happening where if you mm. know it already great if you don't know it and you've taken something out of the show great i'm just yeah. saying that this is something that i i feel is prevalent even in my life because first of all it has to relate to me hmm. so who are you compared to i mean i have i would say possibly had a little more than most comparisons you know so <laughs> yeah so like i mean i'm sure log tere ko tere uncle se compare karte honge mummy se compare karte honge like like you know I, i am not like you know me i am not political mm. right like for example take my twitter my mm. twitter is yelling at the sky about my football team mm. right 
and maybe here and there I'll tweet about my work and and this and that I interact mm. with my friends but you go to my notifications and my notifications are totally political yeah and they're like other people through relativity and through comparison portraying a different image of me yeah last right. time you were on the podcast you should you should read that some of the comments that like ye ag- ye isme wo baat hai ye agla pm face ban sakta hai new generation hai to like how do you how do you hand, how do you not let it get to your head how do you like because it's almost like you don't you were just born into it i think that is i mean massively down to my parents and my family it's just that it's never been a thing that for any of them it's not mm. just me i mean my mom and my uncle and my nani they are in politics and mm. it's still not a this thing for them that you know it's not a oh we are this we are that there we've just been brought up in a way that that is the circumstance mm. that you don't let it get to your head because it shouldn't i'm just like anybody else you know with different circumstances everybody has different circumstances sure. you have different circumstances sure. i have different circumstances so and i think when we i think obviously a lot of it happens like most things is deeply embedded mm. right so they didn't let it become a big thing when we, just from when we were kids also the fact that like the first time i realized that oh Uh, you know that this is something that is prevalent in my life was when i went to doom mm. you know because, because everyone treated you differently not treated me differently but what happens when you're a junior in doom is that um you are asked to do a lot of favors right by the seniors but, uh, oh you told me this go get me yeah. this yeah, go yeah, get yeah. me that you know and so the best thing you can do as a junior is become the color of the walls and be invisible now with me everyone was like where's this kid who is he <laughs> hmm right um so that was the first time i was like oh and then obviously it was weird because i was missing home i was very homesick when i joined doon so then i would see like uh, pictures of my family in the newspaper and i used to read it because i was homesick because i was looking at pictures of them and hmm. reading about them that's the only them. access you had to pictures of them yeah that's so that's you so fun and and email yeah. but you know email also we had like one hour two hours a day one yeah. hour a day so outside of that when you would see the newspaper etc so um yeah so th- then like while i was a kid it was never uh, my family didn't make it a big thing right mm. there were certain these things that oh, obviously as you got older you had to behave in a certain way because that's public spotlight that does that yeah. if you are in the public spotlight irrespective of who you are you have to behave with a certain amount of decorum mm. right so and except if you're a punith superstar <laughs> <laughs> but that's his own sense of decorum <laughs> na yeah but like if I, he started yeah. behaving completely the opposite mm. then that has a different impact on his yeah he will lose thing. following yeah. but um so is that when like the comparison started like i'm sure kyunki some people must accost you every now and then at a party grab you by the arm and say ki yaar aap bada acha kaam kar rahe ho hum aapko yahan dekhna chahte hain aisa dekhna chahte hain yeah yeah that is so what do you say like how do you deflect it polite smile <laughs> you know polite <laughs> smile and actually actually i think you also been in situations with me like this where you have probably pulled me out of a conversation that ha uh-huh. a few times not too know, many yeah like so when i'm around people that happens when i'm alone it's just you know polite smile and hmm. you say thank you see because most people are doing it out of a out of kindness out of good will no they, they're not excitement probably yeah, yeah yeah so you just say thank you and and move on hmm. i rarely i don't get asked much for photos because people don't recognize my face as much hmm. so i if someone asks i always say yes because i mean you take 5 minutes out of your day like when i'm doing the shows throughout the day i'm taking photo after yes, photo yeah. after photo because why not you know um and yeah it's like like just answering the previous question it's never been it's never been at the forefront of my thinking it's never mm. been the central part of my identity that i am from this family mm. right i am made up of different different things family is part of it mm. but once it becomes a forefront of your identity then it starts going to your head yeah i think if you i mean i don't i don't know what it's like to be you just like you don't know what it's like to be yeah. me right so but if i if if someone were to say and this happens far too often in india that uh, 
आई एम ऑलवेज माई लेगेसी आई थिंक यू केज योर सेल्फ यू चेन योर सेल्फ यू नॉट मतलब आपको इवन बिफोर यू कम ऑफ एज यू ऑलमोस्ट हैव टू अपहोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड करेक्ट एंड एंड ऑल्सो लॉर्ड ऑफ द टाइम्स यू पुट इन दिस बॉक्स नो तो कुछ भी कर ले वो तो है ही आई एम श्योर लाइक पीपल विल से लाइक स्टिल लाइक आई एम स्टिल इन दैट बॉक्स या यू नो I I'll I'll probably probably never make it out of of the the box, regardless of what I do. Even if you become the best goddamn photographer in the world, maybe then hopefully, हाँ. you know. But but it's very difficult to get out of that that box. Same way for any kid who's who comes from a family of businessmen. Yeah, it's very difficult to get out of that box. No, in a yeah. different way. It's just that here the public eye is involved. Hmm. You know, so then it's a little more difficult because then you're. not contending with four people in your family or eight people in your family you're contending with so many hmm. but sometimes it's just sometimes i just i i it's about knowing that that box exists that this is your environment and realizing that for me it's like it's not something i want to do hmm. it and then trying to operate outside of it while also having respect for that environment respect for the people that are putting everything that in their it. head they're putting you into that into that box okay right? so if someone comes and says oh you'll uh, you have to join politics one day you mm. know like this random person sir we are sir we are eagerly waiting for you sir you know, so so if someone comes <laughs> if someone comes like that it's not about just dismissing them no because mm. in i am not putting myself in that box mm they cannot force me into that box plus there's also a grace because if yeah. so, if someone has hopes and expectations of you the worst thing you can do to their hopes and expectations is completely deny them correct okay. yeah ke baat hai it's just about, you know it's about having to this thing that other people have opinions hmm. and you accept them even when they're negative when they're positive hmm. accept them as long as you don't let those opinions define hmm. you like again going back to the comparison thing it would have been very easy for me to see that oh everyone's comparing me to other people in my family hmm <coughs> i will let that define me hmm whether that's positive or negative right people can say uh, negative things in the same comparison right hmm. i'm i won't let that define me either aur hai bada mushkil hai karna lekin yeah like i mean objectively speaking because it's not like uh, this comparison is happening in some in some pa- like remote part of india where there's like you know teen char log hain aur char panch parivar hain it's happening like when your family is the national conversation every second yeah so i i'd be lying if it if i said that it never has an effect of course right? sometimes i would I, say you're not human like i read a art- i was uh, sending a deck to someone about my show so i was going through all the uh, press coverage of my previous shows hmm. so i came across this article where the guy has basically written a whole article about me you know narayana murthy made that comment about what is empty as a week yeah. right and there was a whole privilege versus whatever conversation yeah. the guy has used me as an example okay doesn't know me doesn't know my work might know my work doesn't know me has used the fact that i did an exhibition uh, at bikaner house as an example that this guy is uh does not deserve to do what he's doing right now anyone can make a but booking. how is this linked to narayan narayan murthy that that's what so i i was like the headline was that but it kept coming up in every search i did because i had to go 3 years back to take out the stuff for my old shows and all so i it keeps on so I'll re- i thought i'll read it huh and it was all about you know how this guy is doing a show here this that that in the end this line his work is actually good so i'm like but you've like <laughs> written a whole thing aur usme ek line likh diya but his work is good yeah yaar yeah, ye na you know so you don't let those things define you you don't also let the it's a balance no mm. right if i say tomorrow that i'll only accept the bad things and then go into this thing that oh my god i Do am this depressed how will you yeah. work same way if i only go into the good things mm. i'll think i'm the king of the world mm. you know and that's not a good thing either because i'll be like uh, sometimes i might be overestimating what i can do you know and getting into situations where maybe i don't have the uh, skill set to be in mm. 
right? So it has to be a balance. And most of the time, what I find with that balance is a considerable shutdown of, like you create an environment, you create a positive headspace and you maintain that. And I think that that is something that's very integral to me is, is whether it's positive or it's negative. I try and keep most of it out. Yeah. I see it. Less right? input, more curation around what you consume. Yeah. That is a hundred percent. That I, that I pre, I practice like. So, chal, tu bata de. Main to I edit to social media. Ka. Hmm. How do I, how do I filter this out? What, what would be a good strategy? Um, I am very harsh with it. How, what do you do? Right. So anything, anything that I'm not interested in, or I don't mm. want to read, not interested, not interested, mute, 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 mm. mute, mute. So I do it like to a different extreme. Mm. Um, so it's like heavily curated and I only follow like uh, accounts of either people I know or uh, inspiration or stuff that I'm interested in. Mm. Right. So I, I go a little too extreme, you know, I try and cut out as much as I can, but because for me, like, it, it gets in the way a lot, no? Hmm. Because, <coughs> for example, the news, a lot of the times is, and most of the time is uh, bashing my family. Yeah. Right? And it's not something that I want to read on a daily basis. Yeah, why read it? Especially yeah. because, like, if you imagine, if those things are dealing with that, and I'm not going to, like, touch upon, like, which politics is right, which is wrong, which is wrong, which is wrong. So why come to your living room with all of that? When, when, exactly. when you know for a fact that it's already in their mind already. Because that's what they do. See, right? I'm, I'm lucky. That I'm not in politics. Yeah. So I, I also am lucky in a way that I don't need to watch that because I don't need to know what is, you know, being disseminated into the public discourse. Mm-hmm. Right? For people in politics, there are different rules. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about my own rules. Right? That I have... I read the news so because obviously you can't be blind yeah. you can't be blind to what's happening around the world in india etc et so i read the news but from only a certain few sources um and i read it like once a day and that's it you know so mm. i it, it i don't let it uh, you know and like the, the thing i'm talking about that that space that keeps out the positivity as well as the negativity mm. i keep that very strong yeah. And, and I'm, you know, and I'm pretty lucky that I've been able to do that. And I think maybe boarding school helped a lot because I was in a, in a place where, like I said, initially people were like, oh, who's this, who's this? After about a week, 10 days, I was the same as any other kid. Back to normal. Yeah. And I think Dune does that really well within that campus. You can be anybody. Mm. You're still running the punishment my first semester in school, um, I think I ran a, our our batch of 18 kids. We ran a change in break, which was one of our uh, punishments every day. What's a change in break? So you had to run from your classes in the main building to your house, change out of your school um, school clothes into your sports clothes, run back to the main building, get the chit signed by your, the prefect. Mm. So, so there was a one sign, two sign, three sign. And you have to do it like back and forth. Relay race, karo. Almost, but you have you have to come back. Okay, okay. Uh, basically, teaching discipline. No, you, okay. you you don't make your bed in the morning. But like informal discipline, which t- seniors are teaching. No, senior, seniors by the school seniors are the authority, na? Okay, okay, okay. Like mo- like you go to a dosco that's in school. Who are they more worried about uh, annoying? The teacher or the prefect? It's the prefect. I don't know what a dosco is. Someone who goes to Dune. I didn't know that. Dune Okay, okay, no. okay, okay. Dosco, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, we used to call ourselves APGI, it's Dipsai. Okay, that didn't make sense. I, th- I thought we called ourselves a Dunite. No, No, that's, an, uh, that's Dune International School. Okay, okay, or is it? Is it a good friend? Hai. I don't know, I nev- never went. Okay. But that's I actually never went. I only... Uh, I went to RIMC and I went to... Vellum girls with school. I never went to any other. How did you go to Vellum girls? We had socials, no? Achha, school se, yeah. na, hmm. Ye, ha, can you tie a tie? Yes. Hmm. That's something I learned in school. My uh, English teacher embarrassed me one day in school because I was like, I can't tie a tie. Jaldi, jaldi aa gaya, My mom wasn't around. So I, you know, like, 
in in have you play what's the godfather mm. you know sonic orleon he never mm, ties a tie yeah. he's got that waistcoat or wo aise pehenta hai ha so came like that i was like i'm sonic orleon <laughs> i just watched the movie so she like said sabke samne isne tie nahi pehen rakhi hai she taught me to tie it she was showed, so she showed you who the real godfather was <laughs> yeah uh, shout out to manbir kaur ma'am but um तो उन्होंने ऐसा करा बट आई कुन गेट अराउंड टू इट एक दो बार मैंने ट्राई करा फिर वो पूरे जीरो पीरियड बिकेम अबाउट मी सब लोग और भी जैसे यू नो यू कुड हैव डन सम एक्स्ट्रा वर्क एंड लाइक गॉट इन हेयर बट लाइक आई वाज पुट ऑन डिस्प्ले कि इसको टाइप एंड एंड आई वाज सो स्टूपिड आई कुन टाई द टाई एंड आई डोंट थिंक आई लर्न माई लेसन बट आई थिंक जो लोग स्कूल आना थे ना बोर्डिंग स्कूल में दे नो सम स्किल्स वेरी वेल लाइक दे कैन टाई द बेस्ट शू लेसेज like kapde fold karna is something you learn from your mom when she's or whoever is you know taking care of you like kaise fold karne hote but like every boarding school kid they know all of these things ki pant kaise fold karni hai crease se ye sab i st- i still do it so badly and one thing like i still get scared to be late is like an inbuilt thing yeah yeah because we used to get we used to get these change in breaks and all if you were late for dinner um and all that so i still it's like it's a thing embedded in my head that i don't get late so boarding school kids aise karte hain raat ko jab yaad aari hoti hai to wo stuff toy rakhte hain is that like a thing or no to in an all boys school you keep a soft toy cuz you're missing home and <laughs> that's it <laughs> well, that's so funny um you know we were talking about ki earlier about like curating your social media feed i have to say it and um I did a podcast with an astrologer. Okay, mm. and he's a really good friend of mine, right? And I said like who's going to be PM whatever whatever. Like I had to ask like, you know, what are your uncle chances also? I asked. Mm. And he said like in some year 2026 he's going to have prominence. Now he said it. It's not my words. Mm. I just asked not because I am friends with you but because agar main ek national conversation kar raha hu, I have to bring both national parties on as is my mm. right. Prediction kar rahe hain mujhe batao. Right? Because there is there is a clear राइट ऑफ सेंटर थिंग हैपनिंग ऑन यूट्यूब जहाँ पर सारे के सारे पॉडकास्टर बिल्कुल 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 राइट ऑफ सेंटर जा चुके हैं सो आई एम ट्राइंग टू रिस्टोर द बैलेंस एंड डू कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑन बोथ साइड आई गेट हेट फॉर इट ना बिकॉज आई मैंशन यूर अंकल्स नेम मेरे को नीचे जो कॉमेंट्स आए हैं वो नेक्स्ट लेवल थे ही इज डूइंग द न्यू यात्रा राइट नाउ राइट आई हैव सीन सिंगल हैंडली हाउ ही इज चेंज द सोशल मीडिया गेम पहले or ab like how his social media presence has increased and it's not exactly like a typical politician playbook for youtube you know videos with his dog with with his mom just chilling meeting people i think that's very cool like even if you're not political w- w- was that deliberate to like basically show me your human side of his i think it was deliberate that he wanted to show himself Hmm. you know like that, that that's his actual personality uh so i think that's what was driven that was the decision behind that like he likes listening to to people talk hmm. um he likes talking to like you know people our age a lot and hearing what they have to say so he just wanted to put out his own personality because see you know again now he is in his 50s he's been in the public eye much more than even i have been since he was born into since it. he was born yeah you know so there has been there are so many perceptions so many comparisons so many these things about him about any anyone else right you take say for example a big movie star's kid hmm. right might not be at that level but similar hota hai hota hai yeah. hota hai like I, you pretty get you can imagine for sure abhishek bachchan ना चाहते हुए भी चार साल के एज पे उसके सामने माइक लगा दिया होगा बताओ भाई या क्या सीन है कैसे हैं पापा आपके यू नो सो सो आई थिंक इट केम टू पॉइंट ही ओनली फेल्ट ही नीडेड टू पुट हिज ओन पर्सनालिटी आउट देयर एंड आई थिंक इट्स वर्किंग फॉर हिम आई मीन आई एट लीस्ट आई लाइक वॉचिंग इट बिकॉज इट लुक्स लाइक यूट्यूबर इज डूंग इट बिकॉज आई एम फ्रॉम दैट वर्ड टू वॉच चले but you know like that that's very cool that 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 has happened because i think i also think that look it's it's such a weird world where everyone just says the nicest most cleverest thing so it's nice to see like a humanity once and for all so that's cool um but beyond that what are you consuming nowadays like art yeah any photography well, i 
around my birthday i got uh, my girlfriend got me one and sujat actually got me one of the uh, virgil books one is virgil's Bl- blueprint mm-hmm. and one is virgil's works with nike same guy who said uh, agar yeah. aap ek crushed lamp ko ek white cube space mein rakh doge it becomes art otherwise it's just a shitty lamp right that guy right yeah talking about the space and not the basically the the context of art right right um he was also started off white and yeah um before he died was uh, head of louis vuitton um so he uh, his books are really cool because like the the whole way of thinking how this guy st- uh, you know just his his thought process looking mm. at uh, at like fashion at at art at music he designed you know the kanye's um uh what is that album that got cancelled oh did it get cancelled you know the the cover with the cd and the jesus red? jesus he yeah, designed the, the kanye bare mein mere ko bhi pata tha i think jesus hai pata nahi ha wohi hai wohi hai jesus hai that's Haan. the one that never came out yeah, yeah. so um that cover he designed so yeah. just the way like to to explore his books and see the way he thought about all these things pretty cool Mm. I'm always struggling with something that Rick Rubin has said recently because it's fucked my That's mind. That's another thing I'm reading still. Yeah, kaisi hai wo? Damn good. Yeah, but I'm reading it like lamba kheech ke. Ha ha. Uh, he does this whole thing no where I mean all our mutual friends share his whatever Instagram post line he says I see it like on four people sh- main to Rijul bhi share kar raha hota hai. I'm like Rijul. <laughs> Rijul is damn smart, huh? He is he is he is he is slowly changing everyone's mind about him which i think is a nice thing i love rijul yeah because it's mostly everyone likes rijul it's only one person who runs a smear campaign against him and his name is prx <laughs> it's only prx who is who's maliciously involved in bringing rijul down but baaki sare dheere dheere support kar rahe hain i think you have to you have to be that special you have to be that persistent to do what yeah, he is yeah he is one of the most driven people yeah. that i've met like it's like aap mata phorte raho deewar pe and eventually like Like some, we'll like bread. sometimes I have to tell him that you know, talk. Let, let let's stop talking about work, bro. <laughs> But it's ah, it is damn good, dude. It's like I mean sometimes I find it really inspiring. Just yeah, to keep going to like get get what you, you know, what you desire. I have a question. Like and this is something I think about a lot nowadays. What do you think? A sense of low self esteem has to do with great success, or like. art Okay so what today is the 15th mm 15 tarike ha ha so on this two weeks back on the second mm. um i woke up and i was like i need to cancel this show mm as my art is shit installations are shit mm. i'm not going to be able to put it out nothing's going to sell it's going to give me a bad name um and i was talking about this with my mom i was talking about it with sumit i was talking about it with viva i was talking about it with different people and i i got into a panic because my just suddenly i woke up and my self esteem was shot right and it this year it's happened to me a couple of times hmm. i don't know what it is but it's happened to me a couple of times and at least with art you know sometimes it can work as fuel but with art and with me i just it 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 created a panic and then i had to kind of calm myself down and i was like first of all i cannot be the decider hmm. right whether this art is good or not first of all there is no such thing there is good to vidamra there is good to raihan there is good to the next person and the next person and the next person with art there is no hard and fast rule that something is good or is bad um and then also that then the second question i asked myself was who am, who am i making the art for primarily i make it because i relate to it and because i have something to say mm-hmm. right so basically i had to pull myself out of that that you know that i that low self esteem thing i was getting anxious this that and before i went to sleep i was just like at one level i was like cut the shit dude mm-hmm. basically you're scared you're scared that you might bomb this and you're trying to find a way out by saying it's not good you're not good this that you're trying to get out of this cut the shit 
you have to do it you have no option just do it so that i think like whenever i am now that was obviously because i have this this tangible thing coming up hmm. so it it was easy f- it at a level easy for me to say that bro karna to padega hmm you know there's no way you can't do it now you start production are there other people who you know who are relying on you to do this show yeah um but when you're just in a vague when you don't have something tangible coming up it's a little tougher but i think for most creative people it's a part of the process so i got stuck in a bad bad uh, creative block i had like a three month creative block i was just like what the hell do i do uh, someone would say ye kya yaar photo to khinchni how how bad can it get yeah so like like so and i'm saying this not because like i would say it because mujhe pata hai kaisa lagta hai ki mujhe bolega kya kisi ko samajh ke baat hi to karni hai um so like you know i was for new years i had gone to <coughs> the jungle to hmm. take photos and i was suffering the acute part of this whole um thing came on the second but it had been building up hmm. because i had been working so hard and so intensely up till christmas then my school friends and all had come mm. so we were all chilling this that and then i was took a holiday i was preoccupied but when i went on the holiday it started creeping in the moment that the, the doubt started settling in here mm. right i couldn't i i we had a leopard sighting i did not get a single good photo because you were distracted it's just i forgot what i had to do it just just that doubt sat in there I was like, you don't know how to take this photo. So like, my settings are here, there, and then I look. They're, they're not published already, then. No, I mean, I haven't even. I haven't got time to uh, look at them. There might be one or two that will uh, be decent. Like, they're Instagram published already, but can I put them out as prints or yeah. in a book or in a show? Probably not. So, you know, it's so central to being able to create or to actually be able to do anything. Your self-esteem, your own perception of you, and all this stuff, you know. whether it's positive things people are saying about you positive comparisons people are making negative comparisons people are making they reflect on you right because the full idea of raihan is not defined by raihan right one day you'll say you 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 tell me every day raihan is such a great guy raihan is such a great guy i never say that <laughs> <laughs> okay say raihan is such a bad guy or raihan yeah. is such an okay guy mm. right somewhere in my head it will sit then it will it will become part of what i am defining myself as wo log to whatsapp message kar dete hain compliment dal ke burai karke ha and you are thinking are yaar ye to isne like this is the truth exactly like there have been plenty of times mm. you know i i don't like to google myself mm. but i had to because i had to compile this hey bro everyone has some vanity okay i still search for me like vanity thodi na hota hai most of the time if i find something it's uh, it's negative <laughs> yeah like the the odd art magazine is publishing young artist is doing show please watch the rest of it yeah 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 because like i was going through it and they you know there's like some whacked out stuff that he, i used to write a different name when i was in school hey i was like bhai do you have my school notebook uh Yeah, I think when 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 you give nothing to the world, no, they start building stories yeah. because the engine needs to keep going. Yeah, I've met several members of traditional media. I have become depressed immediately, mostly because the way their world works is starkly different from the way my world works. मतलब to feed the machine, something must keep happening, and everyone does a little bit of like what works for the platform. But when you've got like mega machines like that, वो तो game ही बदल जाता है. then you were just uh, a target anyway you were saying ha huh, so i was saying basically all these things they 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 like self doubt sits in anything that is coming from within mm. and is sitting in the mind is going to be the most powerful you know like if i am if i myself am saying oh i might not be good at this it's going to be more <coughs> powerful than maybe you saying it yeah right but if enough stuff is said and you and i'm reading oh my god okay this is why i like to keep a safe distance is because it will start it will start defining what you are now even you ask me how how do you know let it get to your head hmm is by having keeping yourself real 
basically hmm. right and it's in both ways it's in the way where i can tell myself to listen you're just trying to make yourself think you're rubbish at this because you're scared you're actually not rubbish you're pretty decent have confidence in your ability and do it so it's the same way if tomorrow i start marching around thinking i'm you know some sort of that i am something that i am not in a positive in a positive way as in like if i get too overconfident or this that same way that that thing will center you back and say that listen mm. calm down mm. okay you, you the, understand what you are and the 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 environment that you're in and that is what is that is what kind of works for me mm. and that's kind of what i've based this next show on because obviously these concepts the first i have to relate to them myself and i think comparison for me it's something that has been there throughout you know like even if i try to keep a safe distance nothing will keep a safe distance from Correct. nowadays right so i think it's it's that is something that i've kind of worked this show on i keep it as vague as i can so that tomorrow you come and you take away a meaning that is personal to you from it mm. but these are the things kind of that i've worked on um something that rick rubin said came back to me and i've been struggling with it recently something that i've been feeling on youtube a lot particularly he says the audience comes last <coughs> when you first start doing anything um you bring your taste to it you bring your heart to it you know you are earnest in your attempts and you take all the underdog comments that you get because you know that you know some day maybe the tide will turn and i will have my aha moment and whether that is photography art music dance jo bhi kuch hota hai like i'm sure some of our friends whose videos music videos are now blowing up are feeling the same thing that they've arrived in a lot of ways right that they, whatever they worked for has finally worked right or true recognition ek tarah se aa gayi hai the issue then happens is is then you betray your instinct and your own instinct and your own taste get replaced by what works and economics and what other people want and you move from art that sort of came from you to art that is negotiated there is a negotiation between you and the audience you supposed to serve and then you see someone else coming up and you see that originality in them that instinct in them and you wonder what went wrong and you wonder how do i regain touch with this instinct and then rick rubin as if it curve wall martha the audience comes last and i'm like is that really possible like okay for example when even when you're putting up a show you know you know objectively ek photo aisi hai jo itni achhi hai ki sabko pasand aayegi to usko main sabse aage dalta hu then there are photos that i like that i know that other people might not enjoy so i mean i'm what i'm asking is a difficult question because artists have been asking themselves this since the dawn of time at what point does instinct and taste or mujhe karna hai take over things like the practicality of sales making it accessible making it people making it people friendly all of those things see when i started working on this show in april i sat with bp who does all the production mm mm-hmm. and we sat and over the early summer april through say june july we came up with multiple designs um that i was making because i thought people will enjoy them because deliberately thought, yes i was like, i'm going to make a show that people will like that people will come to watch and for the longest time we were sitting there and we were like something is not clicking this is not this is not it's not coming together like it has before and we've been at that point we had already passed any amount of time we had worked on any of the other two shows in total just <coughs> brainstorming just brainstorming right then i started there was one design i did where I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this because I like it. It was the the logo for the last show that Sumit had designed, which we're now using for all the the series of shows. Mm. I was like, I like the form of this. I'm going to make it design that that you know follows the form of this, 
and it also it it becomes the infinity symbol right the in, and it was about it's about time and how time becomes an infinite loop loop when you're comparing stuff and i made it for myself and i really like i enjoyed myself so i was like okay i'm let me just do some so i started working on older designs that we had started we had done initially and some that we had done with other people in mind and we started working on them working on them and as time has gone on over the last 8 months i have realized that like the same the the conversation we had about uh, the stuff being timed mm. the show being timed that was for other people that was not for myself that was for the experience of the viewer i think that's important but when i started when how say okay this is what i want to say how do i connect it, it, it those things weren't fitting in because if i am not able to with both shows i have been i have put them out because i have something to say when i went back to that feeling mm. that this is something i relate to this is what i want to put out there when that became the central feeling then the show clicked then for the first time i was like okay mm and then on top of that right when that foundation is built then i'm like okay you know people will walk through like this then the audience comes in i see once the art is done once the art is curated once the installations are designed then the experience comes in so i would agree i i think most most artists would agree that if they are not relating if they are not making the art for themselves mm. at some level the founding principle of that of most art pieces will be that is made for themselves because of some feeling that they were feeling most artists will tell you that is that is when their best work has has, has come out but then the question of diversifying and ratios comes in teen char men apne liye banaye for you like pictures four or five i know will sell right but there's also that right like because That's, if you create everything on instinct only yeah yeah so that I practice that. I practice mm. that even when you're taking pictures. No. No. Mm-hmm. So when I'm making the art no, when I'm curating the art yes. <clears throat> so when you're taking a picture, what are you focusing on? Because yaar dekh main batata hu. Jaise ye mere paas phone hai. Theek hai? I know the rule of thirds badly. That's all I've learned through one reel or some article. So mujhe pata hai ki screen ke matlab this is my camera. Like if I were to click a picture with a bottle, right? I know a cool picture comes when I do it like this. There is no guarantee ki picture achhi aa rahi just because maine isko left pe rakha hua hai. but this is one rule i know i know nothing about photography this is what i follow right one could even say this is my subject quote and quote so when you click a picture <laughs> this is the isc this is the icsc isc school college definition okay okay right? this is if you want to do like we were talking about still life now in that context i'm saying if you want to draw the diet coke can exactly to the diet coke can as an art piece mm. that is what or a photo of that that is what you would follow right but what that doesn't tell you right is that this glass there are multiple pictures you can take of it okay such right. as right you you can make anything out of the the bridges in this glass the dents in the glass right but the rule of thirds will make you take the glass in the center hmm. glass ki photo le li use that use the use the rule of thirds to build that photo right let me I'll show you what we were trying to do today, right? Like we wanted to create the effect of water, hmm. so we just use this glass. Look at you, and there is water in it, and it's reflected with the light up yeah. on the ceiling. You make one, I page the, so we can huh. probably put it in the video. Okay, interesting. This was BP, not me. Okay, but you see, it's the same sort of, it's the same non-linear. You just have to kind of, like hmm. I said, I. I think you might have left when I was when, uh, by the time I said this there was a question when I was talking at KNMA. Mm. I said there there should be no rules when it comes to this and someone objected to that. They didn't like the fact they said there must be rules. Objection audience aa gayi thi. Question kar rahe the question, question answer. Um <coughs> but I truly believe that. Mm. I think yeah there will be the cream will rise to the top. Mm. That will happen naturally. Right? 
whether that the 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 actual art is not great but the marketing is good that will rise to the top but the marketing will have to be good that's so the cream will rise to the crop mm. top um which is going back to like the rule of thirds and you know, how do you compose photos how do i compose photos every composition is different right i also used to be like this i was like you know i have to get the tiger walking straight at me with the lies in line the camera straight you know the tiger has to be the focus of the photograph and all these things these layered rules in my head take it like this take it like that uh-huh. the road has to be straight you know get the whole animal in the photo when i got hurt the the composition with which i was seeing things changed right yeah so instead of both i was seeing with one so the composition of everything changed subconsciously the composition of my photograph started changing so i started i started letting go of these things i was like you know this tiger with half its eye looks much better than it does if it if i get the whole thing right <laughs> the composition within the photograph right like if there's a tiger sitting there instead of just taking the portraits and i'm not saying that i'm the first one to come up with this mm-hmm. so many people do it so many people do it better than me as well like there are some fantastic photographers who who use the abstract as a tool to bring out so much definition you know so all these things basically i think it's good to know them um but very honestly if tomorrow you ask me listen rahan can you explain uh the technicalities of a camera i might not be the best person to do that mm. but i'll give you good photos from the camera yeah i think everyone i mean some sciences have fundamentals everyone should know yeah when it comes to an art bahut sare aise log hote hain ki jinhone art school mein drawing kari hoti hai but for the life of them they cannot draw something original and i think that's an issue i think as a general you know that i believe this that as a general thing i think there are too many fundamentals too many rules too many uh you know made up rungs of the ladder i think every ladder should have rungs in the art world i think there's so too many that. made up rungs content with a bahut zyada hai like obviously one is numbers which is like but how how do you want the numbers so it's like okay first you become a youtuber then you become a bigger youtuber then you do ott then you do this and then what Yeah. So everyone has one clear path. The moment you start building these hazy random paths, everyone gets confused. Ki ye kya ho raha hai? Because there's fundamentals that if you violate, you're like, I don't know, like yeah. threatening people almost. I think there's a lot. A lot of it has to do with ego. I think you know it's a. People unnecessarily get offended by stuff. Yeah, just say, when I was little, I had learned. I'd become very good at the English language. My my main thing was bad grammar. And I was exactly like a grammar Nazi for 2 months or 3 months in my life. But then I stopped. And now I love bad English. I use it all the time myself. And I give people a wide berth because I would consider myself very good at the language, but I don't know any grammar rules that I can tell you. Matlab mujhe bhi nahi pata ki superlatives kya hote hain aur ye sab cheeze kya hoti hain, past participle kya hota hai. I just don't know. I just have a very good instinct for the language. I never make syntax mistakes because इतनी सारी words पढ़ने के बाद ना sort of आपको instinct आ जाता है. Yeah. But then, like it is so. मेरे को बहुत बुरा लगता है जब लोग किसी को grammatically correct करते not to correct them but to show off that they know more. It's like what are you saying? Yeah. I think it's. Yeah. Everywhere it's like, I talk to most young creative people. and they feel there's you know there's too much gatekeeping yeah for no reason bade artists ko zyada pata hai badi galleries ko zyada pata hai yeah right. i think pata hoga pata hoga hmm. i'm not saying nahi hoga pata they've been doing it for longer than most probably they'll know more you know but the platform to explore and the the you know the space to explore which i think is so important when you're uh in the creative space i think is shrinking and is not a good thing really i think in most places uh in the formal structures hmm. whether it's art fashion music etc it's shrinking it's like whenever the cream does rise to the top 
it then wants to throw out the rest of the coffee yaar wohi to cheez hai na like i think when you rise through traditional and formal institutions tumhara na itni lag jati hai matlab ki tum sochte ho ki koi na aa yahan pe like and then people build parallel institutes people rise to the top using their and friends then they, then they also they like uh, they, they so, became become the same people so there's a very funny you know the game red dead redemption so there's a very funny incident where john marston the protagonist he goes to mexico and with two um, factions ke beech mein na typical like rockstar games rockstar games at some point will put you as a helper in two <coughs> opposite gangs hmm Why city? Can there be one? You had the Haitian gang and the Cuban gang, and Tommy was said he was helping both of them at the same time, right? And then they don't find out, and he helps each eliminate Haitians and Cubans without them knowing. So, is can there be as a what else? He finds this direct, uh, dictator called Pinochet or something like that. So, Royal Palace was helping him. So, here he rebels are helping him. Okay, the rebels' ka leader is very good. He has very romantic notions. He loves people. He loves people. He loves people. Eventually, through something, he helps both equally. The dictator. is overtaken by a coup from this rebel guy within days this guy is like ab bhi kisko nahi dunga ye dictator ban jata hai so what's the point hmm. so so this this whole notion that people often forget how to keep it democratic and inviting for the next generation and other friends when they've reached the top uske liye insaan ko bahut therapy ki zarurat hai taki wo i think yeah obviously it's a, it's a it's at some level it's human nature hmm you know but okay it's always it's always fun to be on 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 the side where where you're wanting to change that and wanting to you know try and make a more sort of platform type situation hmm. but then who knows you know when you're on the other side that's true um so when is the show when can people attend it where is it so it's called upman um what does it mean so the direct translation is relativity so okay, okay. so i'll tell you a little bit so it's a series of five shows that are uh, based on five pramans um, basically in indian philosophy they um the pramans are what you use to gain knowledge um so when i did the first show dark perception i wasn't planning like i didn't know about this um so i just did a show about perception because it's something that i wanted to explore um as it happened that's in in one of the there are multiple ways to read these but uh, in one of them perception uh, uh, is the first one um then the second one is anuman which is inference so i took some theory from that and made it into a show about choice and how you use inference to make choice the third one now which is upman um if you are to directly translate it into english it's relativity but the meaning is more comparison it basically um the text talks about how you define things by comparison right so i know that vinamra is vinam is a human because i know i am a human hmm. um so that's similarity i know vinamra is human because i know vinamra is not a glass right or i know vinamra that's dissimilarity and then there's uniqueness where I know Vinamra is Vinamra because there are unique characteristics about him that, comparatively to other people, he has and they don't. Mm. So it's always a comparison. Um, so with this show, I'm just trying to explore that because I've I uh, relate a lot to that philosophy being used. Mm. Um, I and it's 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 a bit difficult because I'm trying to you know, I know that this is something that cannot go away. even if i try within myself that i'm like oh i will not let any definition in my mind of vinamra be made using the eyes of comparison it's impossible hmm right but i think as long as the question remains in my head right that what am i without comparison and there's a very a very good krishna murti quote about this um which basically talks about how without all of these layers you are nothing and that that's actually something my uncle taught me that having this 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 idea in your head that 
you are an idea that's it right so tomorrow we not, you can abuse me it's how much i let that abuse affect my own idea of myself right if i make myself nothing can you abuse me no because you don't exist in a exactly. way exactly yeah so so these are i mean obviously now i am 23 i don't have the knowledge of but yeah chill is there buddy so mm. this is just some stuff that i'm reading about and i'm trying to explore with these mm. shows and the plan is it's not written in stone but the plan is to do these three i mean there's a third one and then take a bit of a break because i want to see how i evolve um mm. as a person as an artist and then come back and look at the next two concepts um with new eyes but yeah so it's basically about these comparisons that define you so i'm using time uh, other people and the self as three comparisons that everybody does so i mean the comparing vinamra to what vinamra used to be 2 months back so or what time. he will be in the future or i'm comparing uh, the fact that i am comparing is the comparison of others mm. i can be comparing myself using time mm. i can be comparing myself to what other people think of me so then again the all three are linked and then i feel that the two comparison of time and comparison of others deeply reflect on what i was talking about earlier how these things reflect on your own image of yourself of course so these things re- reflect on your on the comparisons that you make on yourself and then basically i'm trying to equate the the freeing aspects of not having any comparisons so like i use nature to talk about uh freedom so how nature a tree doesn't care about the next tree mm. doesn't see that the next tree is wearing jordans mm. or has more leaves you know i mean um or is growing taller than it is it's a tree it exists mm. you know so nature i find whenever i'm talking about freedom and i'm talking about stuff that exists outside what we were talking about the city the structure i use nature a lot because i think it is free uh and then basically you know the, the idea of the show is to talk about this idea of nothingness and how how when you strip everything away hmm what are you that's the question i'm raising when you strip away these comparisons what are you uh before you tell the dates and the venue when you were saying this i was reminded of this quote that eckhart tolle the power of now once said he said that do an exercise where you imagine someone saying something to you something that is hurtful and uh, where do you feel it so you, usually agar if i direct something if i say a string of abuse is right at you so you will feel it here right like chest mein feel hoga mu yahan dimag mein feel hoga pet mein feel hoga whatever is like now make yourself transparent so it's like if you if someone says something to you it passes through you because you don't exist and it's like whole like meta idea yeah and it's also these ideas are very you know they're heavy but huh. it's difficult to do it you know like i am sitting here and i'm saying that that if you are nothing you don't get affected by anything if you are nothing you don't get affected by anything good, positive or negative but i do get affected so mm. it's only like very very headstrong and you know probably like i don't know but probably like monks or like you know really like deeply headstrong people meditate who meditate a lot and who kind of are very spiritually aligned and all that um uh, have this sort of if you want to call it enlightenment so it's just about putting this theory out there and seeing how people are reacting to it and like you said making yourself transparent if we all could do that fully then great it's mm-hmm. about trying to do it so that it kind of helps you know that's that's what i feel yeah even in our everyday lives with with family and yeah. friends kai bar koi kuch bol deta hai you avoid a lot of conflict yeah so i, I mean i can tell for sure ki sometimes if i'm not well rested well thought out well meditated yeah. fully scroll through instagram or dimag aise hua kuch bolta hai na koi so even before it comes to my chest my response is already ready and it's like bam back at you or bura and that creates this whole reactive cycle jahan hum dono log angrily lad rahe hain hmm. and if i just let this pass through me and let it un- like not affect me and 
ہائٹ جسٹ بی فائن اف دے سیٹ کہ تو تو یہ کام نہیں کرتا یا پھر تو نے میرے ساتھ یہ غلط کرا یا کچھ بھی وٹ ایور لائک دس از سم تھنگ دیٹ یو تھنک از رانگ بٹ یو ڈونٹ کریٹ اے سین اینڈ یو لیٹ اٹ بی دی ریلیٹیوٹی اور دا ریئیکشن اور دا کمپیرزن ڈزن افیکٹ یو پاس تھرو یو بٹ مور ان تھیوری لیسن پریکٹس وچ از وائی آئی تھنک ایگزیکٹلی سم ٹائمس یو نو لائک فرانس کا سیٹ پوئٹری کین اویکن دا فروزن سی ان سائڈ یو So I think if art can trigger a conversation... Yeah, it's just about that. Th- that allows you to think. As opposed to, ki yaar, like, self-help, which sort of, like, says, ki, oh, then I will meditate for three times, do this, do this. Which is something I love about art, because it doesn't give you a prescription. Yeah. It just show it describes to you what this looks like. If you take it, it's on you. If not, then, then that's great. So, so where... Like, in Delhi, there's a show, of course. Ha, so it's at Beaconer House. Um, Beaconer House, where? In Central Delhi. Yeah, Central Delhi. Delhi. It's yeah. right next to India Gate. Um, it starts on the 28th of Jan. It's on till the 4th of Feb. Mm-hmm. And um, it'll be on from 10 in the morning till 7 p.m. every day. And anyone can uh, come? Anyone can come. Mm-hmm. Anyone can come. Uh, at As long as it's within those times. Uh, there'll be plenty of people to walk people through it, talk about some of the stuff that I've spoken about. They'll be giving their own perspectives on it, which I find is great. Mm-hmm. um and and yeah i'll be there if anyone wants to talk about it or log isko kahan follow kar sakte hain because i think by the time we put out this episode it's going to be within the range of the uh, show a few days before we're not sure yet so, so my instagram rayan arvadra so that's where where all the stuff is being put out about it but yeah mazedar perfect it was a blast Yeah. Like I said, it's been a while. And before the camera, I've not been like on the table doing podcasts too much. Um, but I had a blast talking to you. Yeah, and, uh, good fun. Good fun. And um, didn't expect to go in even all these directions. We're, even when we're talking, when it's not on camera, it's... Yeah. Then it's more like, what are you doing today? Today, I'm doing this aspect of this whole aspect. That day when we went to genre, we had a yeah. good long talk. I think, I think what I love about long form is you can express your thoughts... Sometimes you can say more than you would say in private conversations. Yeah. Because private conversations, you can just, you would like, you're very op- operational, procedural. <laughs> you talk too much about the intricacies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, think, I think you talk too much about yeah. operations and details. So when you're, when you're thinking that, yeah, people are listening, then, uh-huh, then you're like, so, you kind of like talk about big picture and it's a good change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people can follow you on Rehan yeah. Arvadra on Instagram and go to the show. It starts on the 28th, ends on the 4th, 4th. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Every day. Yeah, check out the art. Come say hi. And this was Doskas. We'll see you all in the next episode. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye. Sayonara. Ta-da.